Okay, guys. Now let's talk about the mechanisms uh, with which the mitochondrial DNA behaves like uh, a fully grown cell. That means they can divide themselves up, and sometimes they can uh, join themselves to make a large cell. Uh, now, like this, uh, as we know that mitochondria uh, uh, and and the use of mitochondria and the uh, development of mitochondria inside a eukaryotic cell come with the theory called the endosymbiosis theory. That means uh, the mitochondria cell uh, was uh, previously a free living prokaryotic cell and it is engulfed by eukaryotic cell. Inside the eukaryotic cell, it it produces the energy and give the energy to the cell. In, in turn, they are they are taking the nutrients from the cell and they uh, came to exist like that okay now if we look at this mitochondria this mitochondria cell have their own sets of dna's own sets of uh, proteins and they can grow and divide like a mature cell now how this mitochondrial cell achieve this fusion events or sometimes they can also join themselves up uh, when needed so how they fuse with each other and how they uh, bring uh, them down uh, to make several uh, small parts of cells or small parts of mitochondria so now let's look at here so here is a mitochondria. Now this mitochondria under wants to undergo the say, the division. Now mitochondrial division. Wha how it is going on? There are different proteins that are out there which helping them to finally trigger that uh, uh, or tell them that now it's time for dividing. Dividing. Okay. Because mitochondria are uh, in inside inside the cell. We can find mitochondria in different lengths. Uh, but but uh, when a mitochondrial cell reaches a particular length, it need to be divided. And the signal sometimes maybe. Uh, the signal can come from the nuclear DNA. I don't know, but maybe it can possible because this part of uh, is still unknown mm, for us today. Okay, so research is going on for this purposes. So suppose this is a signal, and this signal is coming from the nuclear DNA, and, and as a result of this signal, uh, it, it tells the cell to go and divide. So they will recruit recruit different types of proteins like DRP1 and HPS1, and as well as they also recruit the DNM1P uh, or MDV1P. And as 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 these proteins are accumulating with each other, they start to make a junction point. Uh, between uh, uh, between the middle uh, like a middle uh, layer of this uh, mitochondria like this middle layer like this so this red proteins are drp1 and the blue proteins are dump1 dum1p or mdv1p now they start to coat uh, in this region and they start to help to pinch this uh, membrane from both the direction from both the direction from left and right side and as a result of this pinching event what happened a tension is built up and as a result of this uh, tension build up the cells will go divide into two small parts okay and as a result of this compartmentalization we, we end up with two new mitochondrial uh, compartments okay we can also uh, look different fusion events of mitochondrial cell if we look here uh, this suppose these two cells need to fuse with each other sorry sorry these two mitochondria uh, actually need to fuse with each other so they will go and dock they need to produce the docking uh, proteins and again uh, for doing this they need to have a signal and that signal can come from nucleus i don't know nobody knows now so they can come and this mfon1 is the type of protein which can uh, come and produces the adhesive network between these two uh, mitochondrial surface and this adhesive networks come close to each other they interact with each other and as a result when they when they come closer and fuse with each other they need an amount of energy and that energy come from the GTP hydrolysis they need GTP for establishing the, this purpose so they are G proteins so using the energy of GTP hydrolysis into GDP they utilize this energy and the del G for the reaction goes negative and the reaction proceeds to the forward direction and this two uh, small uh, unit of mitochondrial segment will fuse to make a large mitochondria when they need it when the when the situation demands so normally what happens right after the fusion fusion this kind of mitochondria can produce sometimes when they need to a huge uh, need to produce a large accommodation for enzymes and all this stuff they need to fuse those compartments together okay it, it will vary from one time to another time so there is no actually natural cycling of fusion but there is a natural cycling of fissions because mitochondria needs to divide right after some time okay and during this division they also transfer their genetic element from one to another and before uh, this fusion they must produce all the ingredients uh, or they, they must duplicate their genetic elements as we know they, they duplicate the genetic element called the D loop replication model uh, if you want to know what is D loop replication model please go and visit my website visit my YouTube channel and you can find there okay now this is a detailed mechanism there are a lot of proteins are involved but the main important thing about this fusion uh, of this mitochondrial cell is to make this fusion uh, fusion barrel like this and uh, the adhesive 
a complex like that so as a result of making the adhesive complex with the help of Z4 uh, Z9 and FZ01 they can finally come together and water molecules will live together and then finally the in first times uh, the outer cell membrane will fuse uh, outer mitochondrial membrane will fuse right after that the inner mitochondrial membrane will fuse and finally we will end up with making fully functional large mitochondria but if you look at the fission we must in this case need uh, other fission uh, or tension creating uh, proteins uh, like like in this case we talked about DRP1 or DNM1P or something like that but they also in this case as you can see in this case also they need uh, the GTP but in this picture it is not mentioned but still they need GTP both of this process definitely need the presence of GTP hydrolysis they need the energy and the energy they drag from the GTP remember this mitochondria is a huge source of ATP but they generally do not use ATP for their own purposes they use GTP uh, for their own purposes okay so they're using GTP hydrolysis and energy of from this GTP hydrolysis and they finally break them down or if they want to fuse themselves up they also use the energy from the GTP hydrolysis but in both cases they need tight signal or tight control and this control or signal must mm, come from uh, the nuclear DNA because nuclear DNA tightly controls all the different steps of uh, cellular uh, or biochemical process that are going on inside a mitochondrial cell so that's it and I hope it will help you. Thank you.